Well, 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 if it isn't balloons full of the energy of Jesus because it is Easter time. I really like Easter. It's, it's a nice little reminder that the Lord has uh, arisen and that we all get some forgiveness, but also eggs and chocolate sometimes. If you're into chocolate, are you into chocolate? I hope so. Anyway, so we're going to play a little bit of balloons while I talk a little bit about Jesus because that's just what we're doing around here. Also, I got a free dart monkey, and I think that's pretty baller. Um, also, th this is the next one I need to get is have 200 insta monkeys in your inventory at one time. I'm at 99%. I'm thinking I literally need one more insta monkey. Uh, but, you know, we'll, we'll, we'll see about that. But we're going to kind of play this while uh, I talk about Jesus because I just... That's what I wanted it to do. <laughs> oh man, I, I I really am just like a sucker for like snowy maps, but um, you know one of the first videos where I was talking about God, I was in uh, this, this town center right here, and we get egg for it. So we're gonna just, we're just gonna do standard. We played this one a lot though, but okay. So we're just gonna we're just gonna hang out here for a minute. We're just gonna talk a little bit about Jesus. Now you see, part of the reason I really love Jesus so much is that Jesus is like one of those figures that really clearly stands up to the um, societal expectations of his time and like really kind of breaks them down. Where it's like, you, you know, like the Pharisees are always doing this stuff where it's like, oh no, they're the prim and proper type of people. But like they they're like coming up like, hey, why does he hang out with like? Um, ladies of the evening and tax collectors and things like that that's not like proper uh people to hang out with when you're like a big a big fancy teacher of the law and then he's like well you know you send um, a doctor to those who are, are issues rather than the you know the healthy people and all these other things now i think that that's pretty good because it's like well you know i think that we should accept people no matter what's going on with them and at least as much as we possibly can you know sometimes you uh have to set certain boundaries and things like that especially if you're not like a professional like a uh professional health giver type person and it's like understandable man like and you know you want you want to help a lot of people but at the same time it's just kind of like there's so much going on and you can only get so far by um you know being involved with certain folks i you know we're gonna turn that down just 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 to teensy bit <laughs> okay that's fine but you know like there's only so much you can do by being like directly down there and involved but like those who are like really brave will they'll they'll like hang out with just about anybody there was this whole group um of they're like sufi adjacent and sometimes they would end up and like later on they would end up becoming like involved in the sufi movement um i never remember how to pronounce this but basically they were like um Foolish mystics are, are wise fools, essentially, and, and what they would do is they would, like, do behavior sometimes that would, like, openly have people, like, shun them, like, in public, but, you know, in private, they would have, you know, like, this really deep, intense devotion, because part of it is that you don't want to, like, you know, like, be doing the devotional stuff just so people see you and people are like, oh, wow, look how devoted that person is. Well, I need to hang out with them. And, you know, because you don't want to have your ego puffed up because, you know, you're hanging out with all these people and they're like, oh, man, look at how perfect that person is. I love that person so much. It's, it's like, no, 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 you know, you're in this for God, my guy. Similar to how Jesus would tell people, like, you need to, like, pray in your closet. Or, you know, like, he mentions praying in your closet and things like that. And it, it's it's really really very fascinating, because it, there is definitely this appearance of like the outer presence of what we have in like spiritual life being like something that will like elevate you and get people to like pay attention to you and things like that. And that is of course like the exact opposite of what you want to do. Like that's part of the reason that like in some areas you can look around, you can see that certain um, Buddhist organizations have basically become like tourist organizations, or you can read the stories about how like they'll cover up for like misbehaving monks and things like that. And it's kind of just like expected for certain things to be going on. There's certain places where it was basically even like expected that like young monks were going to go out and party and collect and things like that and not really be like absorbed in the dharma and you know uh kind of like almost like abandon the dharma when it was like inconvenient and things like that and you also have uh certain groups throughout history who were willing to be like warrior monks and like kill people and like 
uh, I'll do all kinds of stuff like that. But like the ultimately, the much more important message is that it, you know that it goes within rather than just being like an external thing. Like there are lots of observant observances within Judaism that are they're they're still spiritual, but on some level they're kind of meant for you to stand apart from those around you, so that you can be recognized by the people around you. You could argue whether or not that's good or bad in the modern day, but you know like. There are definitely people who are like, oh, okay, so that means the outward observance is the most important thing. But it's like actually inward observance. Inward observance, giving your heart up to God, giving your heart up to uh, Jesus, or giving your heart up to, you know, Kali or whatever your chosen divinity is, is actually far more important uh, than your like outward observance. And that's not to say, you know, poo-poo outward observance. No, you always pray by yourself. Never pray with anybody else around or anything. We're not, we're not saying that. What we are saying is that sometimes, you know, you need to make sure that those things that you're doing, they're there to help you in your spiritual life rather than just for appearances and things like that. And, you, you know, sometimes it's also really important for us to remember that we all have our own difficulties and struggles and that it's not proper to judge one another and i always like going back to the story of jesus you know with the woman caught in adultery and there's a variety of meanings Ooh, issue maybe that we okay okay we're, we're still good but um uh, you know, the woman's caught in adultery, she, and these, uh, I think they're judges? I think judges are priests, they're, they're Pharisees of some sort, I believe. They're, they're some kind of Jewish leader, and they, Jewish, a group of Jewish leaders, and they bring, um, this woman before Jesus, and they say, with well, this woman is caught in adultery, and, uh, the law says, to, the law of Moses says to Stoner, what do you say? And they're trying to like get him caught up because they're trying to like, hey, ha, see, you're not even like really law man. There's a variety of reasons they're doing this, but um, and then Jesus just, you know, he takes a stick, and he starts writing in the sand, and he says, let he among you, without sin, cast the first stone, and you know he continues to write in the sand, and slowly they all get very embarrassed by their own sin, and uh, some people think that what he's actually doing is writing out people's sin. There, um, we don't have any direct evidence for that, but I think it's an interesting interpretation and something that's definitely worth considering, for sure. Um, and as they're kind of, and, and as, as he's like sitting there writing, they all kind of get up and go, and they're, they're all embarrassed from their own sin. They're all realizing the mistake they've made, and you know, then uh, after a little bit, Jesus looks up, and there's just him and the woman left. Or all the people, all of her accusers have left. And he says, is there no one left to accuse you? And she says, no, Lord, no one. He says, uh, or, is there no one left to condemn you? And she says, no, Lord, no one. And then he says, neither do I condemn you. Go and sin no more. God is this being of forgiveness. No matter what we do, we can rely on the Lord for forgiveness and love and understanding. You know, God is all-knowing, and God is willing to forgive some pretty crazy things, my guys. Now, that doesn't necessarily mean that you should just go out and just sin willy-nilly. Don't go out and do things that you think are bad or that are, you know, harmful to your spiritual life or anything like that. Don't don't be a silly billy like that. <laughs> don't, don't, don't get it twisted. As a guy in a suit who was a president man said. Um, don't... You know, like, use that as an excuse to say, well, I can do whatever I want. Um, yes, God is ultimately incredibly forgiving, and God is willing to do, and... Well, God is the one who has provided every air, the breath of, like, your every breath, like, the air for every breath. Oh, well. Okay, we need to strengthen up a little bit. But the air you breathe, you know, the, the land you walk on all of this different stuff god has provided you with your life god has provided you with this consciousness in the consciousness that you really are rather than you know this body and all that stuff like that god is giving you all of these wonderful things and god you know doesn't really expect anything in return uh you 
should know that God has provided everything for you and that God is providing your every experience and that God is with you in every experience. So, you know, you don't really gotta think that, you know, God's not giving you stuff. God's always giving you stuff. And, you know, Jesus also says that whenever two among you, like, gather in my name, I will also be there. You know, God is two or... I think he actually says literally like two or three. But, you know, like, God is with you in every little gathering, but God is also with you no matter what's going on. Even in your darkest places, God is still with you. God is that light that shines eternally. That consciousness, that love that is ever shining, that ocean of bliss, right? So, you know, you don't gotta worry too much about it in terms of that. But what you should do is you should understand that the wise person goes from the lesser pledge to the greatest pleasure. Like, look, this sinning can give you a lesser pleasure, and I'm using sinning here in a very particular context. Like, I don't really believe in the concept of sin, per se, as some kind of... <coughs> excuse me. As some kind of act that God has forbidden, totally. I think, I think that experience envelops all activities in some way shape or form i think that some are more harmful to your spiritual journey and are not as good for you as other things i think that some things are uh, going to bring you closer to god and some things are not going to bring you closer to god and you know it's partially about the harm you cause yourself but also partially about the harm you cause others but you know sin for shorthand people because people have their own ideas about what that means and stuff like that anyway we have these moments where we're, where we feel like we've sinned too much, but you know, like Jesus dies on the cross for you. Pretty sure he's willing to accept your sin and willing to accept you, despite your difficulties and your um, moments where you're not maybe as good as you could have been, or where you know things are not going the way maybe they should have, and things like that. Like God is not abandoning you just because. You know, you got something a little bit different going on, and God is certainly not abandoning you if you're gay or if you're, um, you, you know, uh, of not the quote unquote correct religion. There isn't a correct religion. God is always loving, even if you're an atheist, even if you don't believe in God, God still loves you. And we should love everybody despite what they do and despite the differences of opinion they have and things like that. We are bound to be better. We should be better. And we shouldn't have these little moments where it's like, well, that person's not, you know, a Christian, not exactly like my kind of Christian. I have literally heard people talk about how like people going to like a church across the street are like going to hell and things like that because they're not in the, they're not like real believers. They're not in the right church. It's like, come on guys, we're better than that. You know, we are all part of the body of Christ, and we're not, like, separated because, oh no, you went to a, a slightly different building. How could you? The sin, <laughs> the terror, the hatred. It's like, no, don't think like that. Remember that, you know, in Christ we are all brothers and sisters, and that we are all bound uh, with love. And that God is always there and is always willing to hear our prayers and is always willing to listen to us no matter what kind of sins we've done, no matter what kind of things we've done that, you know, uh, cause harm and things like that. Now, that doesn't mean that we should never, you know, strive to be better and we should never, you know, strive to make sure that we... Uh, Oh, those guys don't have camo. I don't have plenty of cash, so we're just going to restart. And we're going to do, 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 do. And I can't. Oh, that's, that's right. So when I, I'm a silly Billy who forgot to give. Let's do this. There we go. Okay. Um, and then, you know, you can make mistakes and God will still come to you. You know, like, there's like the whole story of doubting Thomas. You know, and like all, all these other people who are like, you know, after Jesus comes back, like they have to like, like be shown Jesus. They have to like physically touch Jesus and all these other things. It's like, did Jesus reject them because they had moments of like lack of faith and that they were scared? Like, no, of course not. Jesus didn't reject them then. Jesus isn't going to reject them ever. That's kind of the, 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 the glorious part about all that, you know? And yeah, some people are real difficult to get along with, but you know. The Lord always tells us that we should be good to one another. And, you know, 
the Lord tells us that we should love our enemies, you know, so get to love it. <laughs> get to love it. <laughs> but, you know, we, um, we have moments of difficulty and everybody has moments of difficulty. Remember that we shouldn't be going around judging one another and we shouldn't be going around spreading ill will. We should always be trying to spread good, good cheer and good as much as we can, like great, um, great enthusiasm you know uh, I think it's the Greek Orthodox Church on um, on Easter says uh, I'm gonna I might butcher this I apologize I, I'm not Greek uh, Christosinetsky I think it's Christosinetsky because it, it basically what it translates is he is risen or, or Christ is risen and then uh, he is risen indeed is like the response and it's like like it, it's a moment of celebration like God has risen God has given us Wow I think I'm not, I'm not, I don't actually have the best defense here. So what if we put a guy here? Gave him these. And then what if we did... Uh, let's do you. Do, 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 do. And then let's do... Actually, no. Let's do one of these. I always like doing the pursuit helicopters. I think they're fun. But, you know, we all we all have our moments of difficulty. We all have these moments where you know maybe we've done something that we think is particularly bad, and you know I I, I am personally of the opinion that God will forgive anybody, and that God is beyond any of these concerns and is invested in us as individuals as we are you know in truth one with God. And all that great stuff. Not like the idea of like this eternal hell and stuff like that. I think is kind of silly. Now, of course, I am also a universalist in a lot of ways, and I think that we will all eventually get to the great goal. But like that, because God is like part partially experienced, we're going to be like going on kind of forever and things like that. And there isn't really a moment when you die. I mean, like the Tao says, like, the reason we have a lot of problems is because we have these selves. If we didn't have selves, what issue would we have? But, um, we, we get to take part in this divine play, and we should try to enjoy it as much as we can. We should try to have a nice time with it and not be, you know, constantly rushing forward and constantly, you know, oh, I have to reject, uh, reject, accept, or destroy all these different things, and it's like, you know, you read the Astrophica Gita, and, uh, you, you know, once the knowledge is in, once the guy understands, what, once Janaka understands what the master is teaching, it's like, you know, no need to renounce, accept, or destroy. You don't, you don't need to change everything around you. Bliss is available right here, right now, and it's not about changing everything. It's actually about you know, embracing peace and embracing love and embracing God and all these different moments. You know, like what Ramakrishna says, like, you know, he sees God in the beggar, he sees God in the criminal, in the sinner, in the saint. There, are, God is always there and God is always is full of that same uh, loving, deep compassion. You know, pretty much no matter what is going on. And that's like one of the truly wonderful things about God is that, we, you know, we're always kind of worried about like, oh... Have I have I lost God's forgiveness or something? Or at least I've heard people who are worried about that sort of thing. Like, oh, have I lost? Have I lost the the love of God or anything like that? And it's like, well, no. God doesn't ever stop loving you, no matter what's happening. You you never lose that moment. You you never lose the uh, deep abiding love of the Lord. Not truly. Now, you might have times when your faith is a little bit more down, or times when your faith is a little bit more up. But ultimately, God is always there every step of the way, no matter what's going on. And we should be grateful for that. We should try to remember that and try to uh, live our lives as best we can and remember to help one another. And also remember that, you know, just like Jesus who washed the feet of his disciples, you know, there is a lot of beauty and glory in service. And the service of the Lord, sure, but also just service to other people. God didn't come here to sacrifice, uh, you know, like to get on the cross and all that. 
just cause or because it was just like, oh, well, yeah, you're going to glorify. It's like, no, no, it's a representation of your sins being forgiven, but also God willing to give up everything for you. And, you know, it's like God is, like my Eckhart said, God is always much more willing to give than we are to receive. And we need to be opening our hearts more to receive the blessings of the Lord and receive those blessings which are you know always pouring forth from god even in moments of great difficulty and even in moments where we are not like you know understanding exactly what's going on and that's not to say that you're always going to have an answer you know sometimes you'll have uh, moments of great difficulty and sometimes you'll not be sure what you're really doing or why you're doing what you're doing you know by having faith and persevering through it you can gain a lot of growth and a lot of great experiences and that's like one of the really, really kind of wonderful things I think about the teachings of Jesus. The teachings of Jesus, partially it's because they, they, they show us endurance, but they also show us joy. If you read like the writings of Paul, like especially like Galatians and things like that, you can really hear the joy in the early Christian community and you can hear the love. Now, of course, I am, I am personally of the opinion that some of those... Um, writings that got in there are quite possibly not like some of the some of the some of the pauline letters are not necessarily 100 percent attributable to paul now maybe i do that for a variety of reasons but you know i think if you read the ones that were like pretty the most scholars agree on are pauline you're gonna find that there's a lot of really great um teachings in there and there's, but there's also a lot of joy and there's a lot of you know like the beauty of being like a member of this great community and seeing like the love of the lord in everyday interactions and a love uh, that spawns from one another in these everyday interactions and i think it's really really worth um imbibing that and really worth focusing on that and thinking about like how even in times where people were persecuted they were still full of love of the Lord and they were still willing to give themselves up and things like that for the Lord and they were still willing to um, embrace that embrace the difficulty and embrace those moments of pain you know like despite everything and willing to work through those together as like you know these greater communities rather than simply giving up or rather than simply you know saying no I take it back I'm not a Christian because you know, once people realized this great joy that was present and was available to them um, through the love of God and through the love of Jesus Christ, people didn't want to turn around. People wanted to stay. People realized how important it was to stay and people realized how important it was to, you know, keep around and keep in this community and keep, you know, telling people the truth and telling things as they as the teachings of the other uh, great Lord told them and trying to get them more and more to understand the glory of what was happening around them and being willing to embrace that uh, wonderful, wonderful set of teachings. And I really think that that's very worth it and very full of, you know, the generosity of God. And I, I, think, I think we're very lucky. We're very lucky that we get to live in a time when you can learn so much about um, these various different spiritual teachings across various different traditions. But we also live in a time when it's really easy to gain access to someone like Meister Eckhart and to like learn about uh, the mystical tr Christian tradition and like the beauty and the strength that was uh, that is present within it. And I think it, it, we really are truly blessed to live in an age where it's really easy to learn these sorts of things and to get into these sorts of things and like you know obviously we all have our own little bits of interpretation and, and things among us and the lord speaks to us in such a way where so many of us will come to different conclusions but it's still all within the body of christ and it's still within this great uh love that we're uh fostering among one another and all of the wonders that we get to share with one another and, you know people talk about miracles people talk about well, isn't it wonderful that there are these miracles that uh, people have done in the name of the Lord and like the miracles of Jesus? Like, I don't think that those are, I don't think that like the outward miracles are the greatest gift 
of God. I think the teachings, the teachings of living uh, among one another with love and the teachings of fostering love among one another is truly far more important and far more fulfilling than I think the teachings of are like the teachings and then like you know the outward miracles and that's not to say the outward miracles are bad or anything like that but i do i do think that um the the inward miracles the transformation that people undertook like i've talked to people for instance like sri ramakrishna who talked about how they came to believe in sri ramakrishna because even these people like you could really stories about these people who were like not like great people who were doing a lot of bad things but they they came to Sri Ramakrishna and they ended up completely changing their lives and having like these amazing turnarounds so that they could uh, really have moments where they fostered spiritual growth and fostered uh, real understanding and, and fostered all these things within not just themselves but also well that's unfortunate. Mm. I don't know if it's worth it. I just want to get to round 100 so that we can, uh, I can get that one last, uh, thing. Well, who's it? Oh, we can't put them right there. Okay. But, um, we, we have these moments where we, we get to foster growth and we get to foster, you know, understanding among one another and we get to foster um you know the glory of god and we get to experience that glory and understand like what it all means and where we're all coming from and like how we can all relate to one another and how important it can really be to be among one another and you know all of these teachings are full of like joy and life and we get to experience you know a, a life where we get to read about all these different people, read about the lives they lived. You know, we also have people like Andaya Ma, and we have like uh, Saint Teresa, and we have all these different like mystical saints that we can go and read about. We can also read about, you know, people like Rumi, and even, and, you know, even Araby, and all these other people. We get to read and see all this, all these glorious teachings, and all this uh, glorious love that uh sprouts up around us and we get to have all these moments where we truly get to embrace all this and we can find that even in moments of crisis we get to have uh communities full of people who are willing to help us out and are willing to you know help foster our growth and there's always people even when even when there's moments where it seems like a lot of spiritual teachers are not as um Truthful, I guess is one way to put it as others could be. Oh, man. I think we, we definitely need to put something else over there. What is it? Another 500? No, oh, whatever. It's it's for the video at this time. It's okay. I, I have tons of monkey money, so it's not that big of a deal. Um, but we, we get to see all, all, all these wonderful teachings as, the, as they come up. Oh, nope, that, that didn't work. Let's not, let's not do any more. <laughs> Actually, no, we're talking about overcoming and doing all these good things, so I have to overcome. <laughs> uh, you know what? We're going to do this, and then we're going to do, 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 do. We're going to do that, and then we're also going to do this guy here, and we're going to do... Couple of these. Oh, you know, I'm not even gonna. I'm not doing. I'm not fucking this. Definitely need to do more of that. Okay, it's doing a little bit better now. But um, yeah. <laughs> we have all these moments where we get to uh, overcome challenges and we get to experience the love of the Lord even in difficult situations, even in situations where I'm not sure if my monkeys can actually get pass to the end here but we have one one round left oh yep yeah, there's the there's the big bad i think it's called the but the bizarre no that's a zong no the zong is the earlier one i think 
Yay, we did it! We got to have a pilot monkey! We got to round 100. Thank you, Jesus. Praise Jesus, everybody. Praise Jesus. Praise God in all, in all of her manifold forms. Let's see, is that enough to get me? It is. We made 200 monkey money and we only had to end almost 2,000. I call that a good return. <laughs> but it's not really about that. It's about overcoming and all these fun things. Anyway, thank you all so much for stopping by. And I hope that you have a blessed day. And I hope that you all know that uh, I love you and God loves you. And uh, bye bye love you. Bye. Have an absolutely wonderful time doing all these various different things. Okay. Uh, bye bye Love you. Bye. God loves you. Bye.